Hello everyone. It's been a really long time. <laughs> this is the first video edition of The Word. I'm here with Elizabeth who has been uh, absent for an even longer amount of time. And I also have Annika. How are you two doing? Hey, I'm good. I'm doing really well, thanks. Anything exciting happened in your lives? How was Halloween? Boring this year. Really? Yeah, I didn't do anything. Annika, did your dogs dress up? No, not this year. I was busy with a foster cat, so. Oh. Well, uh, so we have some very interesting topics to talk about today. We're going to talk about Miley Cyrus's um, Halloween costume because that's extremely important, and then also talk about the uh, pred possible predatory lending by a firm called Cash Call in the United States. But first, here are some insignificant headlines, guys. So you better listen because these are really important. Um, Chris Brown has released a mixtape entitled X Files. Um, the cover portrays the singer in a straight jacket. Some would say he belongs there. Um, he's giving this away for free on the internet. Um, the British R&B group... Nobody would pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what, Annika? I hate to say this, but you know new artists? It seems like new R&B artists, when they try to break them into, the, into, the, into becoming popular, uh, Chris Brown seems like the choice that people... They constantly, they go to. For some reason, his music is selling. Really, I, I can't understand it, and actually, it makes me yeah, really sad. Some people are very easily forgiven. Most of them as an artist, you know. There are a couple people I can't stand as human beings, but you know, their movies or their music, yeah, are catchy. I mentioned the fact that I still listen to his music, even though I, I can I I dissociate myself with his actions because when I think about his actions, I get really repulsed about what I. I can't. I, I cannot. Mean, like Kanye West, he has a couple songs, but yeah, you know, that's the thing. Like, I really have to do some sort of cognitive dissonance because it really disturbs me. If I think about their actions because they're really bothering me a lot. He exactly. Like, I mean, but if it's on the radio, I'll catch myself humming to it. I, I can't bring myself to listen to Chris Brown music now, even if I like the song. I I can't do it. No, but I think that's great, Kate. But I think the thing is that most people just. Don't, most of the people think about it, I think what he's thinking on is that people are forgotten about him, that yeah. the news is just the news, and that people are 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 just the news, Going on in his life. I mean, I, I don't usually say this about people, but I do hope that he maybe, if uh, maybe not goes to jail, but I would say maybe he needs some house arrest, uh, me time indoors. <laughs> what? Professional yeah, I mean, maybe. But you know what? Some stars just live in their own world that's just so isolated. And actually, yeah, I don't know I if you guys... Wait a minute. It's not just stars. Look at the mayor of Toronto, eh? I don't even want to talk about that. Um, and I don't know if you know that Justin Bieber... <laughs> Yeah. Okay, next one. British R&B group All Saints will reunite for tour with the Backstreet Boys in 2014. The group scored yeah, two hits. <laughs> the group scored... I've never heard of All Saints. Yeah. What? Have I, you, wait, you've never I've heard of All Saints? Heard of okay, well, let me finish this. Maybe you will know... Okay, hold on. The group scored two, it's only two hits in the United States. They were mostly, they were British. Um, they were called I Know Where It's At and Never Ever, which peaked at number four in 1997. Four members oh, of the group. That's not, that's not an hit. That's kind of like, all right. What? Number four? Yeah, what? They were, I mean, come on. That's why nobody's ever heard of them. Not because they're British, because they're nobodies. Okay, well, that's extremely negative. Whatever. <laughs> Um, it's true. Okay. Four members of the group will return, and one has since deceased since their last reunion. Um, oh, that's really yeah, it is. Canadian pop singer Justin Bieber has released the sixth th single from his upcoming release entitled Believe Again. 
The new song pairs the controversial teen singer with the infamous R&B singer and acquitted child pornographer R. Kelly. In the past few months... Uh, he, Justin Bieber's new song has R. Kelly. Oh, and Justin Bieber. <laughs> Did you hear about his three million dollar party? And uh, Chris Brown, I believe, was there as well. Yes. I all go with them, you know? Yes, and, and that party was filled with strippers. R. Kelly and Justin Bieber and Chris Brown. Just throw them on an island. this. Hey, listen to this. Speaking of Kim Kardashian, TMZ is reporting that 16 days after turning 18, Kendall Jenner has posted an explicit picture on Instagram featuring her uh, bearing her nipples. She has been inundated. Yes, let me finish this little thing. Jenner has been inundated with offers to film pornography after reaching legal age. Kendall, Kendall's older sister, Kim Kardashian, rose to fame when her sex video with an R&B singer leaked in the early 2000s. Wait a minute, so wait, she thought she was I thought she couldn't post nude on internet. Well, it, it's like you can't see her nipple, but I guess you can see very close to it. You can search the photo and look okay. at it. It's very... I have three words for y'all. What? You're fresh, you're fresh, you're fresh. <laughs> <laughs> you close the camera. I mean, there's a photo that I'm like, picture a 16-year-old in the bikini. You know, yeah. I'm not surprised. Yeah. And we're going to offer you um, Well, he is a very, um, a, a very uh, sensitive kind of disposition. Well, he is. I mean, Kanye West is just a douche. Okay, let's move on. So uh, three more producers have been cut from the upcoming Britney Spears album. This comes after a producer announced that he had been let go last week, so that makes four producers that were axed. This album, uh, even with all these personnel changes, is supposed to come out in two weeks, and the changes have provoked a confused and negative response amongst fans online. This is so bizarre, but the first CD that I bought, for a lot of our um, people in our cohort, it's it's Britney Spears. But for me, the first album I like picked out and I bought 
was in a um, in a U.S. military base in England, and it was a CD of Peruvian traditional Incan music. That's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> that's the CD I ever bought, and that's like when I bought my first CD man, you know, disc man, and the first disc I bought, and it was Michael Jackson's Thriller, and it was the new hot thing at the time, and I was so happy with myself that I could afford the ridiculously expensive disc man and the Michael Jackson CD. That is so cool. I don't know. I on. Disney Channel star Ashley Tisdale has hinted on Twitter that she may be releasing new music by the end of the year. Tisdale has had 11 hit singles in the United States to date. Wait, 11? Wait a minute. No, 11. Really? I only have like two. Yeah. Um, um, I mean, there's so many hits that aren't hits. Oh, my God. Um, Ashley Tisdale has had 11 hit singles in the United States to date. Okay, Paula, well, we might be using a different operative definition of what that means. So, I mean, what is your <laughs> definition? Played on the radio and you can actually hear. Played on the radio and you can actually hear. That's what I was saying. It's popular. It's pop. I'm not. If she's had a lot of hits, single. I've only heard two. That's not the radio. Exactly. I don't consider it a hit. And I'm not sure if Vanessa Hudgens is a better singer than Ashley Tisdale. They're the best friends. I was to Vanessa Hudgens is a Um. So these include "Be Good to Me," "Fabulous," "He Said," "She Said," "It's All Right," "It's Okay," and "We're All in This Together." Last one, Gucci Man. The rapper is suing fellow rapper Waka Flocka and his mother for fraud, racketeering, and conspiracy. Mr. Maine accuses the pair of ruining his career, stealing his money, and ruining his reputation. Well, please, for my amusement, repeat the name of this rapper. Well, there's two people involved. One is Gucci Mane, and the other is Waka Flocka Flame. He was in a movie. He was in a what, porn? I did not see Spring Breakers. I don't think, was it? I think he was in a movie, though. I think he was a token black guy in a movie. I, I have no idea. I have no I didn't idea. I see Spring Breakers. I thought this is the end. Okay. Well, that was your insignificant headlines for today. <laughs> This has been a really long time since the last time I did one of these, and it was audio before, um, and this is the first video one. So the last time that we recorded, it had yet to be Halloween, and so since then, Halloween has occurred, because it is November, I do remember. It's November, and so um, I have to say, I was really impressed with Miley Cyrus's Halloween costume, she dressed up as little Kim, wearing the same outfit that Kim wore to the VMAs in, I think, 99. And yeah. just an amazing dress where, like, her her thing, it was, like, cut off here, and her boob was sticking out, and she just pasted a starfish on her breast. And I saw that uh, when I was eight years old, me and my sister, and we have never oh forgotten it. And it was, like, an iconic image of my childhood. Oh, it really showed American women that they can do something new with starfish. Yeah, they were. I mean, I'm a big fan of Lil' Kim. I like Miley Cyrus, and I actually think Miley Cyrus looked great in it. I think it was great that she was paying this homage to her, uh, because obviously they're both very, you know, controversial. You know, Kim was a young, controversial sex symbol, and now Miley Cyrus is, and it just, it hit all the right buttons for me. No, I liked it, and I thought she was very cute. You know, I think what's, I think the big thing with Miley is a lot of people find it very difficult to see her as a sex symbol because of, she was a little kid with the TV show. Yeah. People don't want to see the little kid. Yeah, some of us, I do imagine her still being here on my hands, but then we also know that she is a grown woman now. She'll be 21. Uh, but he used to be like 15 too, now he's like 19. 19, you know? yeah. So everyone is different. Exactly. And we don't have to know that people do grow up. People grow up in different ways, but some people just grow up. Some people, but some people just have a more, um, um, I mean, some other people think that it's more crazy. No, the top. Well, and I know for me, I'm a lot like that myself. I got married very young. I had a lot of responsibility. 
disability very young, and then when all of that stuff lifted, you know, in my 30s, it was like, wow, this is what having a life is like. Yeah. And so I regressed. It's not even regression. I started living like a 20-year-old. Did you guys see any Halloween costumes that you really liked to this year? And what is it with people dressing in blackface in 2013? Like, is that some here, down here, with the redneck. This is a deep south. But there are a lot of rednecks. We should see some of the trucks that roll around here, and they know exactly. So they know what they're doing. Yeah, they do know what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah, and people drive around with Confederate flags where I live. Oh, I remember that all over the place. I have people that I I live with a um like blogs that have defended it because it's part of Southern culture, it's part of identity. Yeah. But the culture is a racism and oppression, which I don't understand how to justify it. Yeah. But is there, I, I mean, Annika, were there any Halloween costumes that caught your eye? Just the the Clemson one. Yeah. Okay, well, we're going to go to break, and we're going to come back and talk about the big story today, which is cash call, okay? I'm going to uh, take a break, and I'll be right back. Topics now, predatory lending in the United States. So basically, this topic, I decided to that we would talk about this because I was reading a Huffington Post article entitled, Things Your Grandmother Needs to Know to Protect Her from Fox News Ads. Now, you know, this is kind of a funny headline, and I was, you know, oh, I'm just going to read this. Um, but basically... Um, it led me to a much larger topic, and basically the author of this Huffington Post column said, over the course of five hours, between October 24th and 25th, I wrote down every commercial that aired on Fox News during shows hosted by Brett Baer, Gretchen Carlson, Shepard Smith, Bill Hemmer, and Greta Van Susteren, because I wanted to know what was being advertised. Okay, I have a question for you guys. Do you watch any of those personalities or their shows? I watched Jeff a few times. I watched John Stossel several times. I have a book too. Stossel's my least favorite. Video, but I have I don't watch it. Yeah. Um. So I'm sure when it's not so much probably on on the Fox News radio, but I guess I will direct this at Elizabeth. Um. And I think that in my experience, this is particularly true for Fox Business. I don't know if you ever watched that, but the ads that are on uh, both of those networks, a lot of them are targeted towards older people, and a lot of them seem all very suspect, but also it seems like the predominant industry that is buying ad time on Fox Business is uh, male catheter makers. You know? <laughs> I'm too away from those ads. I don't understand why. I don't understand what's up with catheters. I mean, I just put catheters in a lot of people. don't need them. No, you need them with uh, a lot of people have to catheterize themselves because of prostate issues. Yes, and so it would fit okay. perfectly okay. with their prime okay. demographic. Okay. Well, more concretely here, when we're talking about Fox News, recently, I think it was probably last month, um, I think this was probably from the Nielsen ads, but um, now, you know, Fox News' audience has always trended older, but for the first time, a majority of Fox News viewers are above the age of 75. Now that is major, because while while Fox News is does have the highest um, amount of, of of total viewers among the cable news channels, um, the older demographic in terms of ad, ad buys is not very as valued. They're trying to get you know uh, the most of the networks are shooting for a younger demographic or audience, but. Yeah, it can or it yes. For yes. And so this is a this may yeah, be a problem. Because people are minority um, colonists like Michelle Watson, who's so American. Yeah. And like Michael Steele, who's African American, and that's what we see. But yeah. the majority of the news hosts, I think all the news hosts on Fox News are white. If I'm correct. No, no. There are there is a um. Actually, she might be my favorite Fox person. Her name is. Oh, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. She's only really right? Yes, Harris Faulkner, but she's on the weekends only, and she does, and her show's not named after her. And <laughs> I was thinking about this actually this morning. I was watching one of um, Harris's uh, newscasts, and <laughs> the guy called her by the wrong name, and it was the name of the other black lady at Fox News. <laughs> <laughs> 
in yeah, this Huffington that. in this Huffington Post article, he goes on to say many of the ads are squarely aimed at old people, which makes sense. Several of the right. companies actually that advertise in this period that he monitored actually have been accused of crimes. Does this surprise you? What I'm saying is Fox is, is I mean, it, like with the cash call thing and bull blind and all those things that Fox is. Yes. Doing, yes. With their older people. Well, that's what some of these other channels do, and I really think they're targeted towards, you know, low-income black families. They even, I mean, some of these ads even... Oh God! I think they're so degrading. Well, can we? Well, let's focus on Fox News. So, so, uh, and you know, it is. You know, we most we know that most of their demographic is old people. Do you think that part of it is that old people are easy to manipulate, Elizabeth? Yes, I think. I think it's basically the fact that older people, depending on how it is, over the age of seventy, that they are losing the faculties. So they're not able to critically analyze things. Um, they're, they're more reliant and dependent on others. This kind of thing. So they're the kind of the, they're they're targeting the idea that older people will help us. That's why I thought that they're losing yeah. their mental abilities. No, what they're targeting is the fact that old people. No, 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 this is my opinion. Hey, this is my opinion. I'm not saying they're right. right. I'm saying this is no, no, no. I, I know, I know. I'm saying I think they're targeting to they're on a fixed income. They don't have no I think there is multiple factors, and I think both of the things that you guys did bring up um, are valid. This perception that older people or elderly individuals are vulnerable and need protection. So yeah, for that reason, uh, and they have a fixed income, so they are they are easily targeted and easily vulnerable population. Okay, so. Yes. This Huffington Post article continues and it says the ads that were not misleading, deceptive, or criminal were for pills that will give grandpa an erection, which is true if you've watched Fox News or Fox Business or allow him to urinate, but as that's in the not case. any channel, the stupid erection thing. That, well, that's everywhere. I can only speak for, for this and I, I have seen many of them. I would say I've seen oh, more oh, of them on Fox he, and Fox. He, 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 but I think it's a little overstated to say that it's everywhere. You're not going to find those ads on MTV. You're not going to find those ads on any other YouTube channel either. Yeah, not on. Every major channel, they can download anything. Honestly, because we go into very dangerous points if you think that everything is going to be everywhere. Yeah. I'm somebody who used to watch almost 20 hours of TV a day because I don't sleep well. No, I'm, sorry, I'm not saying that. I'm just, I used to sleep only like so ads for the depression medications. That's the other thing that's on all the time. You know, the anti-depression medication. Let's get back on track. Okay, so um, so in this article, it said one of the ads in frequent rotation on Fox News is one for the lending company CashCall.com. Have you guys ever, I mean, before I sent you this information packet with the links, have you ever seen ads for CashCall? Yeah, I have one. Okay. I considered using it until I... T saw how much the interest rate was. And tell fine. tell us about that. Tell us about that experience. Um, I'm on a fixed income, as I said, and I had some bills that caught me unawares, and I needed some extra money, and I decided I was going to look into pawn shops, but there's really nothing I have that's sellable. Mm. So I thought about using one of the payday loan places, or I saw an ad for cash call on on. The, either the seat of yours or WB, I know it was one of two channels. Yeah. So I was going to um, consider doing that until my my monthly check came in at the beginning of the month. Huh. But I realized that then it would put me so far in debt that, um, that there was no way I could even catch up with the next month. I had to borrow from friends and family. So did um, so? How did you get the information to know that it was not the right choice for you? Right on the television ad, I could see the fine print, and I saw twenty something percent, and I said that was crazy. Yeah. 
And then after that, you know, I saw other ads and I looked, you know, I looked into it more. And I looked into, there are a couple other things that I've seen that I looked into it. Do you think that if you may not have seen the fine print and you had taken the cash call loan, where do you think that that, that would lead you? Where do you think you would be today? Oh, I, I would be up the creek, you know. Yeah. It, they're loan sharks. Yes. That's it. They are loan sharks who have TV ads instead of out in back alleys. Elizabeth, what about you? Have you been exposed to this advertising? Um, I've always insisted on paying their loans. Given the fact that I've always insisted, I don't, I, I don't understand the motives. Or I've always been suspect of the motives. So I've always never been lured into them. And I know and I've watched enough exposés on who they prey on and how they put a lot of people to death. So I, nothing is as it seems. The, the, the easier it seems on TV, the easier it is to acquire something. The more, the more, the more like, suffering, I think, the more the long run for the person. And a lot of people, unfortunately, don't use or don't read the fine print, which is absolutely dangerous, which I'm glad to shoot on you. I'm glad, you know, if I, uh, you read the fine print because most people don't do that. And, I mean, I just have the idea that if it seems to be true, then it is. Yes. Yes. So basically, Cash Call has been implicated as making loans at usurious rates, um, up to 335 percent interest on personal loans. Have you ever heard of such usury in the United States? Annika, you can go first. Uh, I've never heard of it. I, I, you know, ensure that loan sharks and such do that. Um, as far as legal, it wouldn't seem like it would be legal, but you never know. I know I had a car loan that was almost 29 percent. Yeah, but that's a far cry from 335. Absolutely, and that's 20-some-odd years ago, but that was totally legal and fine and for voter credit. Yes. So there you go. I, you know, it, and of course, um, a loan on a car is different from personal loans. I know, and loan on a car is a lot more and it takes forever to pay off. But what I'm saying is desperate people can turn to desperate measures. Yes, yes. Uh, that's the biggest part of the desperate people. It's preying on desperation. Yes. And, you know, and it doesn't matter what people are. Right, and that's what people, that's what, that's what, that's what the worst thing about this, is that it preys on desperation, it preys on the poor, it, it's the lady with the, the costume, with the traditional costume and the long black hair. In, in the cash call yeah. ad? In one of the ads. It was a lot of I think, but... I remember that, and that's what originally made me consider it in the first place. What is that? So I was like, oh, that's kind of cool, and, you know, if I have to pay interest, I'd rather pay it to somebody mm. who's got screwed by our government. Yeah. Well, so I was really – so looking at this Huffington Post article, my interest was really picked when I saw Cash Call, and I wanted to look a little bit more. So I ended up on the website Consumer Affairs, and I was looking at the reviews that Cash Call's uh, services got. And 86% um, of the reviewers gave it one star. Um, not surprising. And, of course, the comments are illustrative of, you know, a lot of the dire straits that people who borrow from Cash Call have found themselves in. Here, I'm going to read the comment from one person. She says, attorney generals from many states have been getting complaints of not only abusive lending but about the usury level interest rates that they are going after. Western Sky, Cash Call, and Delbert Services. I'm looking to put this on record because all that is happening is the people are playing a shell game and just changing the names of the companies and or transferring the illegal loans. I just spoke with an attorney through my company's employee assistance plan and he instructed me to send a letter to Delbert, one of the shell companies, stating simply that I am contacting them regarding the debt attributed to the payday loan in my case, the interest is 136%, and any judge or jury that hears this will send them packing back to their TP on their reservation without a horse. I mean, 136%, that, that is, I mean, that's outrageous as well. You know? Well, you know, numbers like that, though, how could it be 136%? Because they... Like that. They, well, I mean... 
I mean, they inflate, I guess. I don't know. I mean, I could see a 900% rate. I get something like that. But how can it be more than 100%? I mean, I, I, you know, obviously we don't know. I don't know. There's something that like 110 percent, 110 percent. I don't understand why how they can. I mean, I don't know if it's legal at all. I mean, the court right. part now is considered legal in any way. Here's another comment from someone who left a uh, their story on Consumer Affairs. This person says, "I took out a loan for five thousand dollars in February 2012. I was aware of the high interest rate and knew I should not have, but I believed." that I could pay off the loan quickly and took a gamble. Well, here I am in October 2013, 20 months later, and I'm still paying. So to date, I have paid $9,740 on a $5,000 loan, approximately 86% to $1 of my $487 monthly payment is applied to the principal. I cannot figure out how to stop paying this company. I've already paid them almost double what I owed, but I fear the consequences of not paying. I cannot afford for some collector to call my workplace or deal with wage garnishment and do not want to receive the continual collection calls I know I will receive. And time and time again, so many of these reviewers emphasize, and I want to tell it to the people who do uh, watch this video, please do not, I repeat, do not take out a loan with this company, please. There are better options. For your own sake, don't do it. You know. You know, though, if I went on the once you sent me the, the topics, I went on Better Business Bureau, and there's not a single complaint on the. But I worked for a, a what I would describe as a mafia-like cabal um, that was really <laughs> scamming people. Oh, and so but listen, and they would advertise on that they had an A plus rating at the Better Business Bureau, and being on the inside, I can tell you that is not the case. So you know, this again, this is anecdotal, but I don't think that we can take those ratings all the time at face value. Right, but I just think it's weird that there's nothing on there. Well, it's really weird that my the company I worked for got an A plus. Here's another person's comment. Native American one. About six or seven years ago, I fell upon hard times, and I was out of work for the summer and taking care of my little granddaughter. Times were very hard. I had been watching those ads for Cash Call on TV with Gary Coleman. After pondering over it for a few days, I broke down and called the number on the screen. I felt a bit nervous about it, but against my better judgment, I took out a loan for $5,000. Every now and then, I'll call to see what my balance is, and it's still $5,000. Um, Elizabeth, let me ask you a question. Does TV advertising allow these companies to get away with more than they would be able to otherwise? It's not about the money. I don't think that, I don't think people, I think people are very motivated by money. So, I think that they're allowed to, yes, they're definitely allowed to get away with things that normally you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't care about. It's, it's advertising, it's money, why not, you know? And it's Annika, it's Annika. I don't think it's TV, I think they, you know, it's radio, it's, I mean, they can add media. I mean, media, 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 media. But not just yeah. including TV. We can include media so that encompasses radio as well. Um, Annika, let me ask you the question, and how do you feel about celebrities appearing in this type of ad? You know, this commenter mentioned Gary That's Coleman. I mean, if they're the fact is, it doesn't matter if they're celebrity or not, they're a paid endorser. And people trust right. them. Right. Celebrities have influence, though. Um, I think it influences the people that they're trying to get to However, 
people are influenced by celebrities. Things would not be popular without celebrities endorsing them. This most stupid is things alone. If a celebrity is not endorsed it, it would no one be a fad associated with it. Yes. People are influenced by celebrities, so if a celebrity appeals appears in kind of ads or whatever ads, it will get attention, it will get traffic, it will get the product sold. And that's why advertisers use these new celebrities. And celebrities don't care because they're getting a paycheck. They start getting, you know, once people start getting mad and looking into the 800 number, which is fake, then they start getting harassed at work. And so, is, so Cash Call is hiring yeah. foreign firms to do this type of calling? In the beginning, yes. Like the general call every day to get their money. Yeah. And, and you know, say, where's our money, where's our money, where's our money every day call. But you know, it's, I've never heard of anything like this. I mean, this may be the most shocking thing for me is that people have reported getting calls um, saying we are coming to arrest you at work. I mean, <laughs> that is bizarre. It's harassment. How is that harassment? It's harassment. It's harassment. It's harassment. It's harassment. It's harassment. It's harassment. They're trying to scare these people into giving them money. And it's even stranger if it's coming from outside the country. Well, that may or may not be. Okay. You know, at that stage. Yeah. That I'm reading in the, that I read in Ripoff Report, they were saying how, you know, they, they, a lot of people use Pakistani, but I'm sure that doesn't mean anything because they don't know. Yeah. I mean, how. Uh, so no. Like the yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. One of the few of them, but they're like, they don't even speak English and they're trying to get me to pay them. And, yeah. Yeah. So, and also, <laughs> Cash Call, Cash Call it can damage. Uh, borrowers credit scores as well somebody reported um, over a two-month period cash call put three inquiries into Experian causing damage to our FICO scores um, you know another oh person I know and another person said these yeah I'm terrible. I'm terrible. I'm terrible. yeah Another person said these people would say they had warrants for my arrest and would be bringing me paperwork. I've been making payments for over. I've been making payments for over a year on time faithfully. I looked at the payoff and it is currently thirteen hundred dollars more than I originally took out. I could kick myself for getting involved before doing investigating. And I think that's the important thing. We have to stress the importance of doing uh, research. Look out there. Um, you need to do investigating before you decide to uh, purchase a financial product or take out a loan. You know, yeah. especially with payday it's loans. Before you do things like that, and a negative stone, especially in something like that, where it is a step for Yes, 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 yes. Um, so another one said, like many people, I was lured in by the radio commercials for a company called Western Sky, offering emergency loans with easy and fast approval. After getting approved for an $850 loan, suddenly the loan was taken over by a company called Cash Call, which we know now is really the same company. I've been paying $150 a month uh, since January, and my balance is currently $882, started at $850. Instead of my balance going down, it has gone up with regular on-time payments. The interest rates are absolutely outrageous, and they will hit you with random fees all the time. Uh, this is indicative of, of what you said, Annika, like loan sharking, you know, essentially. Exactly. They weren't sold. The subsidiary technically, yeah. you know, is... It's not, so unfortunately, that's totally kosher. Um, Annika, let me ask you this I question. Say that the loan was sold, but it really it, it was, was really just transferred in house. You're right. I have a lot of friends who wonder why we have a lot of issues, and I just constantly tell them, I used to call you the fact that we live in a capitalist society, and tell me our issues. Um, uh, I think, well, so we were, so we have the uh, like um, the consequences. 
Party come from our reliance and dependence on capitalism. Yes. I mean, we get the unregulated market. The fact that we don't have regulation in this market, it just shows what, I mean, we, 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 well, ostensibly we have a regulated, um, we have some, like, regulation in our economy, but it's most for many, many, many issues involving inequality, um, on social classes, inequality on income, and income inequality, stem from the capitalist system that we do not have as much, as much regulation in our country. And, um, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people, I mean, I have a lot of friends who are like, what is wrong with your health care system? What is wrong with your education system? Oh my God, why do you need to deal with that? I'm like, I, you can blame it on capitalism. <laughs> you can blame it on unregulated capitalism here. And yeah, it's great. Absolutely, but I mean, I stand to her so confused. They're like, how are you, what, how, are you, how is it possible you live in this country? Like, I don't, I mean, it's just our system. It's our system, it's our economic system here. That's a possibility problem. Um, and I think that's the reason why we have these issues with, that's why, it, 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 um, that's why we have issues with, um, payment loans, is because it all stems from the best the world under the system. Under the current economic system, there is, there is no regulation, there is nothing that says you can or can't do this, you cannot prey on these people, you cannot, there is no, there, there are no protections, um, and any kind of regulation, that we try to impose by laws in Congress or laws by state government are immediately, um, um, there's immediately the backlash by government, by conservative, traditional conservative groups, their ideology. Well, and, and to be fair, neoliberal groups too. I mean, let's, let's put it out there. The candidate who has raised the most corporate money in a presidential election in this country ever was President Barack Obama in 2008. Jacob, just going back to where quick, I would wonder, just out of curiosity, if lending practices like this are even in other countries. Well, so actually I did some digging online and I did find uh, the injunction that the state of California issued against Cash Call, and I'm quoting from it here. It says, Defendant Cash Call Inc. is a lender that makes small, unsecured cash loans to consumers at very high interest rates, excessive and verbally abusive telephone calls at all hours of the day, and properly discussing borrowers' private financial information with friends, coworkers, and neighbors in recent years, um, and the defendant has flooded television and radio with advertisements, touting their high interest loan products and advertising extensively on the internet. That's what a credit card really is. Is an unsecured loan. No, I mean, I mean, people. When you look at credit card loans, uh, credit cards. What happens? Well, what? Um, Annika, what you you said a credit card is an uh, Annika. You said a credit card is an unsecured loan. What do you mean by that? A secured loan is something where there is collateral, like a car loan. They can repossess your car. So that is like the um, mortgage-backed securities with regards to housing. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay, you know, I get it. Loan is a credit card. They have no, you know. So basically, what you're saying is unsecured loans are common, and and so maybe in, in in like cases like a credit card, maybe it's not you shouldn't be inherently wary of unsecured loans, but you need to be I discerning. Know, because that's ninety percent of our loans out there, I think. Yeah. And there are very few people in the world who do not have credit cards or have never had one at any given time. So and and you know a lot of these things that are outrageous, they're obviously flagrant violations of business practice like improperly discussing borrowers' private financial information with friends, coworkers, right. and neighbors. Um, and is this not the same style? I think every time I get a phone call that regards anything financial, like and they leave a message on my phone, you know, the electric recording says, you know, this is for five. If you are not on it, then disregard this call. Hmm. Which, again, I have a little problem with because I don't want any people to listen to that right now. I mean, you know, I thought we could tie this all back into our current economic system. Yes. And what, how we ended up in the financial crisis with the economic system, the fact that people are struggling with taking loans and are constantly in debt with our economic system and there's no regulation and there's no regulation because of our current economic system. I mean, it, it just shows you the follies of unfettered capitalism. And so I that's and you bring up some very interesting oh. points. Let me go on the first thing uh, with that. Yeah. Hang on. Here's one thing I just want to add. The big financial crisis 
a lot of that was caused by our own grief because people have these adjustable rate mortgages and all the banks decided to say, you know what, hey, we can make your mortgage payment lower and well, yeah, so what, you'll have to pay more later, but we're going to make your mortgage payment lower. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily making the payments lower. It was introducing the loans, having the payment originally low and knowing that they would balloon later. You're getting ridiculous amounts of interest. But I think that some people don't, though. I mean, because, I mean, do, do I how many people... Get, but they, even from the basic PE ads, they know they're getting almost 30% interest, which is very high in the first place. Or 300. I, I, I'm aware, but what I'm saying is, you know, but the, the interest is high on these things regardless and these things are not long-term loans. These are, are like quick, quick and dirty loans. But for some people, they end up being long-term burdens. No, I, I realize they end up that way. But my point is that... I mean, just I think what we're trying to say here is that basically the past in the past decade in this country, just risky financial practice in general has been a defining... Um, marker of our economy, whether it's in housing or whether it's personal loans. You know? Um, but Elizabeth, yeah, I do... If we, if that's, yeah, like Elizabeth said, that's the nature of communism. Com the nature of communism? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, thank you, because I was going to say... <laughs> I couldn't have said it better. And Elizabeth, I do want to ask you some follow-up questions to what you said. You know, when you were saying that statement specifically about the economic system and the consumer economy essentially um, uh, encourages and in a sense uh, depends upon people going into credit or using credit to purchase consumer goods to keep the economy. I mean, that's when economists talk about, you know, demand and, you know, purchasing power, things like that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Now, you know, you should have been an economist, because you, you, you know, you're like one of the alternative economists. But, but see, you don't have any, by the way, you know, you're one of the most prominent tendency for free market, right? Yeah, like, I know. You're more conservative, more, I mean, anyone who has won Marxist, and you know, in 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 the in the social sciences, you know, and for I don't know if I could make it in economics because you know they call it the social science without a heart. <laughs> yeah, I mean, pretty much. And, and pulled off people's toenails with pliers. Yeah, I know. I was so horrified by this because I can't believe that. I just could not believe that he was able to say that. I mean, he might have been not sure what he said, but I did not reveal his name to my other professor. But I was so sore by what he said that I could not believe that he was justifying torture due to. Um, well, and I think it can be very easily argued in that situation that Chile did not advance economically. But we need to bring it back to cash call. The second yeah, point I want to the, the second point I want to make about uh, these very insightful statements that you're making is. Uh, do, would you agree with the statement that if our economic system is is at its core based on exploitation, are outgrowths like cash call, like payday loans, is that inevitable? Absolutely. I think that due to if you're talking about well, it's not, we're not we're not talking about pure capitalism. You have the regulation that we're but and, and, like, um, a capitalist 
economy. Yeah, the car wearing um, of a travel economy are kind of companies that exploit the um, that exploit um, you know, the economic system where it benefits you. They, I mean, I'm not surprised that they're not supposed to be that idea wrong because there's not there's no regulation. There's, I mean, travel with is all about um, you know. And there's no risk, there's no quality. I mean, for here, that is for some of my communism. Should we have any more capitalistic features? The corollary of that is I've always been an increase in inequality, in income inequality and social inequality um, to the classes. Annika, let me bring the uh, open the question up to you. Do you think that, you know, based upon the val um, uh, excuse me, um, knowing the values or lack of values that our economic system is based upon, do you think that, that outgrowths like cash call and payday loans are an inevitable outgrowth of that? Yeah, absolutely. We will have an economy based on greed. That is what capitalism is. Right. Uh, there's, no, there's no morals in capitalism. There's, there's no more. You can't be a moral. You can't be a moral. You can't be a moral. There are either in some I personally love because it's from development economics because I kind of don't want to be an economist because I want you to help reduce inequality in the income and um, in social classes in the world. However, um, economics and capitalist reform is not moral. If there's, if there's no concern for the benefit of others. And that's just how it works. You know? I will be the first to admit that I am shitty with money. I can't do a budget. I I'm terrible with money. I get paid in the beginning of the month and um, ribbon on, you know, ramen noodles and friends. Egg know. rolls, <laughs> microwave <laughs> pizzas. Those I are your favorite foods. I have to admit that, you know. And part of it is because I really, I hate money and what it does and what it turns people into. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So many, I have a whole side of my family that every time we ever got together, it was all about, you know, who was better than who. But, you know, oh, well, I have this and you have this. So for me personally, I hate money. So I did a little bit more research, and there was a New York Times article by someone named Gretchen Mortensen, and this is where the pieces really started to come together for me to, to understand how cash call could even operate under the law. Apparently, um, the, the, the head of this shell company, Western Sky, operates on the Cheyenne River Indian Reservation in Eagle Butte, South Dakota. New York officials have no jurisdiction over it. Um, and Nation. And according to Western yeah, Sky, and according to Western Sky, they say that attempts to litigate in this case is an infringement on the tribe's inherent sovereign rights and the rights of its members. Um, and you know, I doubt very serious that they are um, that they are um, that they are Native American and I think they're just you know they bought out a corner of the land just to you know, to do this, and now they're stuck with it. So they're using the Native American it's tribes. Not, exactly, and they signed a deal with, say, for the land or whatever. Because that is so not something that Native Americans do. You yeah. know? I mean, we can't generalize, but... what they do. Just, you're right, in general, but they tend to be a very moral people. And, but what we do know that... A lot, but a very moral people. But, I mean, uh, Americans across the country are being manipulated and, and, and um, being charged these exorbitant interest rates that are not legal in the United States, but because this company is operating in what is technically another nation, they can get away with this. Yep. Um, they, were, they knew what they were doing before. Because, they did absolutely, they did. Because this was obviously, this was obviously planned, you know? Um, and you know, and it gets even more interesting. Even more interesting. Uh, this New York Times article asks, "Who is willing to provide the capital that enables cash call to finance what regulators say are predatory loans?" Well, it turns out that the institutions that finance these loans include Deutsche Bank Securities and a unit of Citigroup known as CIG PF1 Corporation. It is unclear what Deutsche Bank earned from this. I think Cash Call is borrowing, I think, from these big banks to fund and capitalize its, its loans. Um, 
And basically this article and says, and what is probably the most revealing point, it looks as if the New York banks were using online payday lenders to circumvent New York's and the United States of America's usury laws. The banks provide the financing for payday lenders to make loans that the banks think are too unseemly or too risky or illegal to make themselves. Um, so the funding arrangements used by Western Sky and Cash Call are reminiscent of what occurred in the recent mortgage mania initiated by companies like Northern Rock, Bear Stearns, and Washington Mutual, which made thousands upon thousands of loans. When Wall Street cut off the credit spigot, these companies folded almost overnight. Do you think if Bank of America and the others were willing to cut off credit to companies like Cash Call, do you think that Cash Call would still be around? Yeah, they just, um, I'm sure there's not urgent for loans or um, other places to do business, but maybe harder, but I don't think, I feel like these kind of companies, due to the profit margin, probably would stop. Unless they're forced to. Another way to do it, they go yeah. to some other country and find another way to do it. They're making too much money not to. Yeah. So I think, you know, at least in American context, the big picture here is post-recession, large banks, which were largely responsible for the economic, uh, ex the economic, what does that say? The economic, <laughs> you know, the uh, responsible for the economic situation. I can't read my handwriting, of course. Um, you know, responsible for the economic situation that we have today are funneling money to outlets like Cash Call to continue to profit off of high-risk loans. They do it because they can. These institutions yeah, are among. Look at all the big banks that did all this stuff. They they potentially got a little slap on the wrist. Fine. Well, and, and they got well, they got bailed out too. They were they were rewarded with taxpayer money. Um, and then little fines and kickbacks were slapped on the wrist. Yeah, yeah, and you know these entities that are bankrolling these loans are among the most powerful in our society. They include AIG, Morgan Stanley, Bank of America. These are our real leaders. Financial policy is largely catered to our needs, you know, and our government is tasked with representing us in the area of public policy. So why is it that our country is leaving poor and vulnerable people to the wolves, so to speak? And I think that's the open question. Excuse me? You asked a question. It's because they're poor that they're being left to the dust. But I think that's the open the, 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 Well, I, I think it's more so um, what they have to offer to companies like Cash Call, which is uh, desperate situations and money. And I don't, I don't think that the government is not legislating to protect them because it doesn't care, but because moneyed interests know they can influence the electoral process. Exactly. Yeah. And even, you know, it's crazy to say, but even a donation of $100,000 these days would probably not make you that prominent at all, you know? You know, I watch a lot of TV, as I said earlier, and the TV show Scandal, I don't know if you're aware of it, it's about politics. You think keep meeting with all these big companies, and how would that all want to hear? You know, the sugar people, oh yeah, I've got to have sugar and... You know, to make lollipops, and you know I like to cook, and you know, comes to the because she's like from in the middle of nowhere. It, but, it, it's like yeah. our political leaders prostitute themselves to these giant corporations. But at least it's not the 1890s, because if this was the 1890s and, you know, in that scandal world, you know, back then when sugar industry was influential with a president or, or politicians, we would invade countries for them. You know, we occupied Cuba. We occupied the Philippines. Uh, we oh, overthrew no, no, many no, Central no, American no, governments. We would be involved in the Middle East if oil was not an issue. A lot of people think not. Exactly. 
Exactly. So we still do, just on a different scale. Yeah, it, and it's true. We it, it is differently. Yeah. We were hidden back then because we didn't have television. That's true. Absolutely. And we do it quietly. Now they just can't do it quietly. That's all. Yeah, <laughs> you know, but that's and that is the great thing about this is that we, um, you know, there's a lot going on that can be seen as problematic, but in a lot of ways, even when our government tries to make it not so, we do have a transparent society because of the the flow of information and the internet, and it allows us to do things and like this. The camera phones, I think, is more in it because of the camera phones and the internet. Anybody can take a video of something they see and put it out there for the world. Yeah. And, you know, it's a combination of those two. But I'll be, to be very honest with you, I wish they didn't have television for a variety of reasons with, when it comes to, to uh, politics. Because it used to be on what you believe or what you say, you know, your beliefs were. And now it's all about who's the best Western candidate. Well, I think that's a glittering generalization because if you look back at a lot of the early 1900s, 1800s presidential elections in this country, people would just literally pay people to go into the booth and, and vote for okay. somebody. We yeah. can't romanticize the now past like that. Now that can't happen, but my point is now, if you look at somebody like Taft, and I'm not saying I like Taft, I don't like that. I'm not saying that. Or Chris Christie. He would never get elected without having, you know, but like he wants to run for president, so he has a last answer. Hey, basically, what you're saying is television presents its own challenges to our political system and changes the game uh -huh. in certain ways. Right. It makes it visual. It presents yeah. challenges. I think it changes the game completely. Yeah. You know, I think that if you are an ugly to the eye of human being, or if you're deformed, Yeah, and if you think, and if you look back into, you know, through looking back in the television age, I mean, we've only had a handful of presidents that were at least moderately attractive. And, you know, LBJ became president by accident, and Carter, I mean, I don't know, but... Mm -hmm. I'm not saying he's my toy, but, you know. <sighs> okay, but and... If you look at Obama versus um, McCain... Yeah. I mean, everyone, the, the big excuse was, oh, well, McCain's not going to live long enough. Well, excuse me, he's still there and very healthy. So, you know, it, it came down to Obama is young and handsome and athletic. Well, I mean, but we can't really, I mean, there's so many variables to say we can't really pin it on saying that that was the reason that people didn't vote for McCain. We can say it's a factor. <laughs> very big part of it was Obama's look versus... Let's move forward. So basically, obviously, Cash Call has gotten a lot of bad press, and they are initiating, using a, a, a public relations agency, a 2013 rebranding of their business. Uh, they put out a press release that said, combining online finance tools and the industry expertise of our call center agents, we want to give our customers the support they need to make the right call for their financial future. You mean the support they need by giving them a Pulse 800 number and financial call center people who don't speak English, which is what most of their users for cash call you? Exactly. Wait, are you saying that's not good customer service and support? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's interesting. It's good in the sense that people are not going to call customer service and just going to shut up and do it. Any, you know, what cash call wants them to do. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's effective customer service. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, um, and, you know, there I have links here to cash call advertising materials. Um, I will either embed them in this video or I will put them under this video, the links where you guys. Uh, people who are watching can look at the advertising materials and I would ask you specifically pause it and read the fine print because it's very interesting. Um, Annika, uh, 
is there anything else that you wanted to say? What do you want to say to people? Do you have advice? What if people are looking about uh, receiving one of these payday loans, or if they have a payday loan, do you have any advice for them? You know, if, if you absolutely desperately need the finances, talk to friends, talk to families. You know, rather than hide it and be embarrassed by it, it is so much better to do that than to get yourself involved in something that is going to screw you in the end and be a lot more embarrassing and a lot more problematic. Yeah. Read the fine print on anything that you sign. Elizabeth, is there anything that you want to say or any advice that you have? Read the fine print. That's about it. Yeah. Okay. And you well, know, there is always legal aid. If you need to do something, you don't have to understand the fine print. Contact your local legal aid who will explain it to you. Does legal aid have a website? Uh, it's all local, so I'm oh, okay. So just search in Google legal aid and then your state, I guess. So that's looking like the Better Business Bureau and... Although that's not always accurate. I know, but I mean, go online and... and Definitely search online. Every financial institution that you operate with. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, Annika, thank you very much for being here. Elizabeth, same. And how can uh, viewers contact you if they want to... Do so. Okay. Well, this has been the first video edition of the Word. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned a lot. And remember, um, before you take out a payday loan, think twice, read the fine print. You know, like Annika said, talk to your friends. Um, don't let them intimidate you. Okay. And. I can't speak for everyone's situation, but there's probably a better option than a payday loan. You just have, might have to do a little bit more research, but don't believe the advertising all the time. Um, and I, I hope that this situation that we've been reading doesn't happen to you. But thank you very much for watching the first video edition of the world. Bye-bye.